Hello, everybody. My name is Ernesto Lanese, and I'm here with my good friend. Wes from The Rock. And uh, this is The Encore. Here we are. Isn't this wonderful? <laughs> <laughs> I got something for you, dude. I can't wait. I'm nervous and excited. This week, Jimmy Buffet passed away. Jimmy Buffett died. Yes, he did. Now, you might not know this, but I have been to about 10 Jimmy Buffett concerts in my life. I didn't know that until this moment, and I can't <laughs> believe it. I was a parrot head for a long time. Wow. Um, my stepfather loved Jimmy Buffett, so we drive. I, I, I literally used to own 14 of his albums. I stopped mm -hmm. listening around Fruitcakes because Buffett has made a career making the same song. You same know, song over and over. Over and over again. But I really enjoyed the song he made. I enjoyed the flavor. So I was like, oh, man, Buffett does. I listened to Buffett all week long, just kind of think some of the songs I liked by him. And uh, so here's my question to you. Oh, my. What musician dying has affected you the most? Like, that, like it's weird because a musician dying seems like it's, it's far away. It's not my business. Who gives a rip? But sometimes it happens. And you're, and like, you're a little shook. It, it like makes you sad. Like, I don't know this person. Why do I give a, you know, a rip that this person's dead? But sometimes it shakes the tree. Has anyone ever got you? Sure. Music? All right, all right, okay. all right. Celebrity. Any celebrity? Celebrity? So anyone? That's a big swing. Okay. I was just going to go art, musical artist. Okay, musical artist. Are we say, I mean, if you're talking about celebrity, we got a whole other conversation. Musical, so right. musical artist. We'll keep it in the lane. Any musical artist die that really shook you? Michael Jackson. Okay. Where were you when, it, when you found out? Do you I remember? I don't remember. Okay. I don't remember. But it... It, 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 was, it was hard to believe. And, and I... And again, I feel like I gotta put a disclaimer out there. I, I do I do not attest to anybody's character or not, or lyrics or not. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying he was in the eighties, he was the biggest pop star he, in the world. He's one of the biggest pop stars in American history, and it was during a formative time in my life. Those are formative years. He was so big and so influential, so powerful, so uh what what is he? Innovative. His, his musical his musical videos were events when we were kids. They're they're ridiculous. It would be I mean, on the middle of TGI ever before middle of football. Yeah. It'd be a new video being aired, and we'd yes. all tune in to watch it. So he was so, and be, to be honest, just speaking amorally, just for the music and the videos and, and the artistry itself, he was a work of greatness, absolute greatness. And and I thought, and when he died early, you know, he's always a strange person and had a lot of struggles, and he's just, the whole Jackson family is very odd, but... I no offense, Jackson family. Happy to have you on. Uh, <laughs> come on, on. We'll we'll talk about it. <laughs> Janet, Janet can call us. We'll talk it over. We'll be nice. Listen, come on for our Easter service. We'll come love on. to have you. Rhythm Nation. Could, could you name? Could you name? All right, here we go. Oh, so Michael Jackson is my answer. Uh, when Houston bothered me, it, that was sad, dude. When, when Houston bothered me, um, but but not like Michael Jackson. So, could you? How many of the Jackson Five could you name right now? The five name, name of the Jackson Five. Janet's not one of the five. Janet's not one of the five. It's is uh, it Tito? Yep, Tito's one of them. Tito, Obvi I, obviously Michael. Michael, there's one that's like Mexican, isn't there? One of the name that sounds like a Hispanic name. Well, I would say Tito. That's probably the one. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on. What's his name? This is a J. Mm -hmm. What's his name? His name is Jermaine. Jermaine Jackson, yeah, dude. Jermaine Did he have Jackson. a Jerry curl for a while? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I can only do three. I can't so can I. Those are the three. <laughs> <laughs> we got Casey. You got any others? She's got okay, nothing. Okay, okay. Anyways, I was in India when Jackson died. Oh wow! And it was all over the news. There, I'd be on these. Do you know where the village is? Yeah, I'd be walking wow, to the village, wow. and if you were playing Michael Jackson That's in so these far huts, away from the world. in these villages, because that's how big of a deal because he is. Bollywood is music. That's Indian music is danceable music, and MJ made music you dance to. Good, better, ugly. You can dance with Michael Jackson music. I know. Who are the Jackson? Somebody from the '60s and '70s. My mom is screaming at us right now. <laughs> all five names. I got one for you that affected me when they died. Okay, let me hear it. Buffett didn't like Buffett was my my stepdad's guy, so it wasn't like I was super sad. Um, my wife had one happen. Okay, Dolores O'Rourke. I don't know who that is. The lead singer for the Cranberries. Okay, okay. We were scheduled to go see the Cranberries a few years ago, um, in Detroit, and her voice. Who is it? Go ahead, go ahead. Finish your statement. Her voice was was bad. And so she canceled the show. She died two months later. My wife never got to see her live. We were in Disney World, dude. And we're, all, we're sitting there at Epcot watching this awesome show. And I, some friend of mine texted me and said, Dolores O'Rourke died. 
And I was like, sat down. I'm like, hey, Angie. She's like, yeah. I'm like, uh, Dolores. And my wife got emotional because she loved yeah. her music. That music yeah. for her high school, growing up into college, like that. Her poetry meant a lot to her. So yeah, for her, sure. Dolores was a big loss. For me, the one maybe I felt the most musically wasn't my MJ. I mean, a- a- MJ is probably the biggest death in my lifetime. Yeah. Because I'm too old for Lennon, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Lennon or Elvis or something. Yeah. Right. It's so stupid, dude. <laughs> <laughs> can't wait. It was Tom Petty, bro. Oh, he's a big deal. You know, I've owned and destroyed Tom Petty's hits at least four times because an old Baptist youth group, right? Some preacher would come and-, and Devil's s- music. Devil, and, and we'd break the CDs and some kind of like ceremony thing, and I'd break that it, I, the, that Tom Petty's hits. What an album that is! And I'd break it, and then a few months later, I'd be like, it's a good album. I'll go buy it again. I must have that three or four times. But man, do I love Tom Petty. Here we go. The three we named, Jermaine, Michael, Tito. I should have known this one, but I wouldn't have got the fifth one. Marlon Jackson. I don't know Marlon. I, I knew that name. And Jackie Jackson. I've never heard of that person in my life. That's a dude's name? I guess. Dude, yeah, we, it was all boys, right? When you watch them perform, Michael Jackson's so young and he's still the leader. It's by Michael fa- Jackson. It's, he's a leader by There's far. There's no Jackson 5 without an eight-year-old Michael Jackson. Dude, that song I want, I want you back, song's brutal, dude. Song's brutal. Makes me sad if I hear it. Who'd bother you now? Just give an answer. Let's move on. Who'd bother you now? The next person I'm going to be really to any any. I mean, maybe like. Well, so if they're any, older, it's going to be like this. It's about of time. Course, yeah. There's probably got to be a younger musician. Um, you know what? More than Tom, Rich Mullins, dude, bothered you. Yeah. I was I was 15 years old. I was listening to Christian music for the first time. The first time I ever heard it in a church was a Rich Mullins song. Step by step was being played in the youth group like room for the worship time. And I'm like, this song. I, I was in a Christian. I'm like, this song. It struck me how just like the devotion. Like, who could say these words about anybody? Yeah. Like, I'm going to follow you step by step. Forget that. You know, the, the song, the heart of it. I'm like, it's who, really good. who's going to live like this for yeah, anybody? It's really good. And then he, like, I started listening to his music and then he died. I had like two albums and he died. And I was maybe sad. So I guess I'd say right now, if, if this person died, I'd be really sad. I don't, I don't want to put that out there in the world, though. I don't want to like, gamble. That person dies. And so like, you're sending you cards. I know this was really important <laughs> to you. You're probably really sad. You said it on the show. Right? No, no, no. <laughs> Listen, I'll say Pet, Rich and Petty are the two that, that got right. me. Um, then there are some old musicians like when Billy Joel finally dies, I'll be sad because Billy tough. Joel's my boy. Oh, dude. That'd be, that'd be when easy. Bruce dies, when the boss dies, forget about it. Was it was on my mind, yeah. Garth Brooks. Sub question. We said MJ, one of the greatest of all time. Who, if you could take like five artists who are the, um, the American pop greats, who are they? Definitively, just real this quick. Is too long. Just real quick. Real quick. Real quick. They have to originate in America? It's just, it's American big, pop this music. Is a, this is a lot of pressure. Elvis Presley. Yes, by far. Michael Jackson. Yes. You skipped one. Don't talk. <laughs> <laughs> Bob Dylan. Is he, he's not a pop artist, though. Dylan's allowed. I will allow Bob it. Bob Dylan. I will allow it. Who did I skip? The Beatles. They're not American. They affected American music, I though. I just said, for that reason, do they have to originate in America because you got to put the Beatles there. Fair. Well, but the Beatles come to America, take over the whole country. Are we including the Beatles? Because they're on yes. the, the Beatles. Okay. Taylor Swift. <laughs> I will be vindicated. Ah, I'm sorry. It's I true. asked that question just because I wanted to I hear. What you were doing. I wanted America I, to hear I you, you me, put I Taylor gonna... Swift next to Elvis Presley as the greatest American music sensation and you know of why, a generation. You know why I did it? Why? Because she's better. And she's going to be bigger. It's just a fact. We don't have to do this right now. I knew you did that. I, I, I wasn't going to not give you what you were looking for. Let's go. Okay. The question we have for the day at the Encore is this. Um, what do you do if you've blown it? That's, That's a question. Good. Yeah, people need What that. do you do if you've blown it? Now, let's. the question is very straightforward. Sometimes in this life, 
Yep. You fumble the ball. Yep. And a lot of us pretend we're victims of circumstances, but sometimes we're the author of our, our own destruction. Yeah. I would say probably more than not. More than we want to admit. Yeah. yeah like <laughs> we, it wasn't the economy. You know, it wasn't your health. It wasn't the guy that turned left and said it was, it was you, you know, it was, we make huge, huge uh, blunders. And we make messes of the good things in our life. And we can, burn bridges. Yes. We push people away. We mm -hmm. fail. Yeah. And failure is something a lot of us are not it's not okay. To, it's not okay to fail in America. No it's way. Not okay. It's not okay to admit failure. I'm not saying that, but that's that's in our blood. It's it's not okay to, to lose. You know what we love? You know what America loves? We love building someone up and tearing them down, dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a sport. Britney Spears, come on down. We just love yeah. lifting them up, yeah. pulling them down. 100%. Yeah, rip them to the ground. Find the thing. Make fun of them. Mock them. Put out memes. Michael Jordan cried at Kobe's funeral and said at Kobe's funeral, Kobe Bryant's dead. People are weeping in the room. Michael Jordan is speaking at your funeral. And he said, I told myself I wasn't going to cry because I know they're going to put another meme out there of me crying. And it was, everybody laughed. It was a light moment. But, but think about true. that. That's true. He's, I'm not allowed to look anything but bulletproof and superstar or they're going to mock me. And, and, and he's right. And so you're not allowed to fail. You're not allowed to lose. You're not allowed to mess up and just make a huge mistake and go, you know what? I made a massive mistake and it's all my fault. And I'm sorry. And so you get lies. You get spin. You listen, get... it's the Bill Clinton special. Mm -hmm. You lie, you lie, you mm -hmm. deny, you deny. Mm -hmm. And even when it's caught, you, you, you change definitions of the words. Yeah, and there's been a president since then that has taken that to a, a, a Super Bowl level. You know, th th there is, we don't lose. Nobody loses. Like we, and if you do, you don't admit it and to the point where you believe it in your own heart about anything. And it's it's not okay. I mean, especially if you're, we're going to be Christians. It's not okay to be like that. No, I think the Christian life, I think dying to self-repentance is part of the journey. Yeah. Like repentance is, it's not just how the story begins, it's how the story continues. Like it's not just like I, I admitted I was a sinner and called upon the Christ when I was, you know, mm -hmm. 14 years old. When I was young, I go to camp every year mm -hmm. and rededicate my life to Jesus. You do this? All the time. I mean, and listen, it was awesome. Because you're away from your friends, <laughs> you're away from the girl, well, there's you're girls at the bonfire, you're and tired. You're, and God, you're, and you're just away from normal life and just God gets a hold of you and you're like, I'm all in. Yeah, you go back to school, go to home, and it's after like a, a couple of weeks, you get the the big fade back into yeah. your carnality. Yeah. Um, but every year I rededicate. I mean, listen, now that I'm an older man, I'm rededicating like every month of my life. I'm like re reorienting the compass. Like, Lord, I I got off track. I need you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm constantly trying to like redo the compass because I don't want. I'll have something happen in the day and drive home and go, man, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not the man I'm supposed to be. I did, I did, I should have handled that different. I didn't honor you. It was about the flesh and blah, blah, blah. And I, I just, I'm like, oh man. So I think that ability to admit you're wrong in the little things is very important. Yes. So that you can actually admit you're wrong in the yes. big things. Like we have to be able to say, Chris, the good news is predicated on the bad news that you're a sinner. I love if that. If you don't admit you're a sinner, you can't receive the grace needed to cover the sin. That's right. Wow. So you, you have to say, yeah. I am a sinner. I have rebelled against the throne. Mm -hmm. I am the dog returning to his own vomit. Like that's, that's a picture yeah, is I'm me. I'm that guy. Yes. I watched my dog eat its own vomit the other day. I just stood there and watched like, that's me. Like I'm like, I remember. There I am. That's me. The Bible's right true again. It's true I'm a disgusting, awful, horrible thing. Like, it's important to remember. Yeah. Um, so in the little things, you need to speak. But but there are big things, too. Mm -hmm. Like, you can, like, you can lose a job. You can blow up. Like, you lose your marriage. You lose you can, your family. Lose your kids, yo. Yeah. Yeah, you go to jail. You lose, yeah, you, you lose your Your parents kid. can disown you. Yes. You can be a criminal. You, you, yes. Yes. What do you do? What do you do? Right. When you have detonated mm -hmm. your life, because this happens. Christians, listen, King David detonated his life. Sure did. Blessed by God. Yeah. 
God is with him, loves God, yeah. sings songs of worship to God. He is God's guy. Yes, he is. And in the and in the springtime when kings go to war, <laughs> King and David, he's just getting out of bed, <laughs> dude. Dude, he looks over. I know. In a moment, in a mo and that's how it happens too. Things into whatever but it may be that, happens in a moment. I uh, was reading a book by Lucado. And uh, about what book was it? It was the one you told me to Facing read. Facing the giants. Facing the giants. You got the book. I but there's a moment in that book that made me made me angry. Lucado. A lot of authors and preachers say this. They put a little bit of blame on Bathsheba. I don't like that. Listen, there's the, no blame. The text literally says David is not where he's supposed to be. That's what it says. It says he and is not doing what he's supposed to be doing. And the servant warns him, which is a warning from God. He literally says, is this not Uriah's or uh, the, Uriah's wife? He's saying it like, dude, like I don't, and, and that no warning comes to Bathsheba. Never mind ancient Near Eastern culture where if the king calls you and you say you're dead, like she's property in that culture and time. Like there's no, she, anyway. So yeah. I didn't, a lot of preachers do this. And I'm like, That's I know I've heard that before. It's infuriating. I'm with you. I heard I saw I heard a sermon once entitled "Don't Take Baths on Rooftops." P -p People are stupid. Anyways, sorry. The guy a guy preached that sermon is like, oh, I tried, uh, but uh, David is he blows his yeah. life to yes, pieces. Yes, he does. And listen, what he does forever alters the trajectory of his life. That's true. Like if you read the book before then. It's all oh, he's a God, golden dude. he's a golden boy yeah I mean there are there are a few mistakes dude mm -hmm. that guy is doing the right thing when it costs him he lose everything but he's right right because I want to obey the Lord and after it's just a lot of pain and a lot of tragedy it's all but that's his doing so what do you do if you've blown it you need to know that God knew you were going to he knew it he knew it and he saw it and he still loves you you just need to know that from the get. There's stuff to do now, but like you just need to know. God was not shocked. He was not surprised. He wasn't caught off guard. And he's not going to abandon you. Because if he didn't abandon you before, he knew that was coming. And he didn't abandon you there. He doesn't abandon you now. He loves you the same. And to add to that, to say, to say, a lot of us think we're actually good people. I know. And so when we pull a rifle, we're like, I've done wrong. I, I did something bad. Listen, you were this bad the whole you time. You were always this bad, and you were always going to do that. Like, you think you're, like, and, and when I was in college, I was known as a sinner. And so a lot of the good kids wouldn't talk to hang out with me because I was a mm -hmm. bad kid. But when they wouldn't mess up, they'd come to me and ask for advice. Because, like, well, you can't judge me because you suck so bad. Yeah. And I'd tell a lot of these, like, some maybe someone get pregnant you know in yep. bible college sure someone you know just failed out of school and like i'm a sinner now i'm like listen you finally feel guilt because you did something stupid listen you've been this guilty the whole time yeah, absolutely you just pretended you thought you yep. were awesome you've never been awesome yep you've been a sinful piece of crap the entire time yes so listen you're not like you're there's not an extra layer of grime on you that you blew your life up god loved you when you're a sinner before, right. and he loves you when you're a sinner now. Yeah. Just adding to. Yeah. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Why? He demonstrated his own love for us. When we, not when we cleaned up, acted religious, and faked it to ourselves. He knew you were that bad, and he loved you. So he loves you now. Your parents may not. Your, your ex may not. Your kids may not. And they may never. Your, your friends, friends may not. You might have got fired. You go to jail, the courts, everything. The, the church, church might throw you out. The church, yes. But. That speaks nothing to how God, th that all may be true, and they may never speak to you or look at you the same, talk behind your back, brand you by your sin, that's fine. God doesn't do that. He, d he doesn't do that, and he doesn't treat you or feel that way about you. So you're still the same with God as you were the day before. You just need to know that in your heart Do Jesus to start in, moving. In his parable of the, the, sh the sheep and the goats, the things he upholds as beautiful and good, mm. like visiting those in prison yes go to the people society has i mean they probably are in there for a reason yeah you go yeah. and you care for them yes when you care for the discarded and the outcast you're caring for me like jesus still sees them and yeah. wants to reach them too absolutely those sick in the hospital go get them yep now think of this question what to do 
I like that starting there. Just God loves you. You yeah. got to remember God. Because if you don't believe that, you're not getting anywhere. You're going to believe that you've there's no hope and there's no way out, and it's just going to spiral into your death. I mean, you got to know that part. Uh, the text I'm drawn to the most on this question is Luke 15. The, the prodigal. prodigal, the prodigal son. Mm-hmm. <sighs> yeah. Well, you know I, it's saying? funny because I was going to say something about what you do next, and it's in that text. It's, Matter, it's just, I didn't think about that text, but I was going to say the thing that's in there. Like it says, he comes to himself. You own, you own it, is what I was going to say. Yes, there is a. He sees what actually is real. No more denying. No more telling yourself lies. No one's to blame. I have sinned. This is what I did. And I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. And that was a true statement. That that was true. When I um, counsel with couples, let's say there's an affair, there's an extramarital extramarital affair, sometimes they'll come in, let's say the guy has uh, committed adultery. Sometimes a guy will come in and he's like, whatever she wants to do, she wants to leave me, I deserve it. Like, there's a brokenness and I'm okay. There's hope here. Yeah, yeah. This person understands what they have done. Mm-hmm. But some people come in, there's a little defensiveness. Like I said, I'm sorry. What more do you want from me? If this process means I, I got to walk around. How many times you, I got to say I'm sorry? That person has no idea the level of betrayal they have committed to their loved one. And they don't feel it. You think you should get a pass. You don't understand what you've done. You have no idea no. the depth of what you have, have have committed against this person. Right, and it's not about the words. It's like when the prodigal talks, you believe that he believes what he's saying. I can say to somebody, you, my wife, anyone, I can say, I'm no longer worthy to be called your friend. Okay, all right, babe, I'm no longer worthy to be your husband then. But if she, if that's not real, the words don't even matter. This is what he believes, and so that means his heart is in the he right place. He realizes it. Yes. He realized, and that, he that came that, to himself, as you said. That is a hard place to get to. Is you got to wake up and see what's really happening. Yes, you got to own it. You have to know. Like, listen, I I failed out of college when I was um, man, nineteen, twenty. I was a, I was a junior. I failed out of school. I always when I always told the story for a long time. I always told the story very much like I was a victim of circumstances. Mm-hmm. And you know what? Some things happened like that were hard. But as I got some distance from the event and as I prayed through it, I came to realize there was some unconfessed sin in my life and I was just running too fast and yeah. I was burning out. Yeah. Um, it was getting me at both ends. Yeah, sure. And When I failed out of college and I, I didn't go home, I didn't go see my mom, I didn't go, I don't want to face the church because the church had helped me go to school. I felt so much shame and guilt, I ran and hid for a long time. Mm-hmm. I lived down in Texas for a while. And it's a shame's a heck of a thing. Right. And uh, there was one day I got hurt on the work, for, work site. I was laying there, just staring up at the, the ceiling of this, in, this uh, walk in cooler. And I'm like, okay, Lord, like, what do you want from me? And the Lord Bray just, he's like, you got to go home and face it. Come home and face me. And I was, I mean, I was just like, it was awful. Like, I didn't want to face God. At, and and if, I know God was there in Texas, but in my mind, yeah, yeah. I'm running from him. Yeah. Like, it's the weirdest, stupid thing yep. in your mind. Um, I remember just laying there and crying like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll come face you. Like, I'll come home and I'll look you in the face and we'll deal with this. And it, that, that, it, it was, it's, it's, and it's, there's a humility. You have to humble yourself. No like, excuses. It wasn't someone's fault. And they may have wronged you that contributed to what you did, but you did that. You did that before the Lord and to the Lord. So now the, it doesn't, like, you can't. Those reasons are not excuses. You no, know, right, right. Like, well, she did that and he did that. Like, that may be true. You still didn't, don't get to sin against the Lord, and we do. And so then you just say, I did this to God first. He does. He, 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 go, he talks to God, then he walks home. To apologize to his father. And yeah. I, I would say this, you got to come home. Yeah. And I, I mean, like home, I mean, you got to come back to the Lord. You got to do business with the Lord. And that might be hard because sometimes when you blow it, you hide, you run, yeah. you double down on your sin. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you know. David did that. Triple down. Dude. I mean, it's good. <laughs> Buddy, turn it down. It's <laughs> good like, for the goose, the good for the gander, I guess. the floor, man. It's like, and it bl- all blows up. And it always will. <laughs> Jeez, dude, I'm just thinking about like 
in the addiction world, like if you like, well, I, I, cr- I messed up, might as well burn the whole thing down. That's yeah. how we are. Yeah, we are. But you got to come home to God, like and, and that, that, you know, through the shame, through the fear, you got to come back to the Lord. Come, yes. And then you have to come back to the world. Like there are, yes, there you are, do. There are people and circumstance in your life. Um, you know, you might have to go talk to somebody. And again, they may not receive you well. This isn't about a movie, a Hollywood, a Hallmark no. movie where everybody cries and hugs and it's all forgiven. That may not happen. Sometimes it does, praise the Lord, but it may not. Reconciliation is not the point. The exactly. point is obedience. That's good. That's good. Yes. The reconciliation is a miracle, but oh, it's, not, it's not a promise miracle. No, that's right. And she so, might not come back. He might not come back. Your mom might die and never talk to you before it's over. I've told people that have blown their marriages up, and no judgment, uh, but they have, and it was their fault. Whoever I'm talking to, whichever party, it's, you know, it's, man, woman, yeah, yeah, whatever, it's your fault. And that's I understand that. And they're gone, and it's over, and the family got destroyed, and they went out and they married other people, and it's they're they're they, but they still didn't own their part. And so they don't feel at peace. And maybe they come to Jesus or they knew Jesus. Or they grow in their spiritual maturity. They ask for forgiveness. Or I've told people, you need to write a letter. This isn't about, you're, you're never getting back together. It's never going to happen. You're married now. This is what, But you, with, the, with, with unity with your spouse now, you need to write a letter or you need to knock on a door. I don't know what the relationship is or isn't. You need to find a way to communicate back and say, I'm sorry for what I did. I, I contributed and I... This is what I did to blow our marriage and family apart. And I just need to say, I'm sorry. I'm not looking for anything from you, but I've repented to the Lord and I'm repenting to you. And that's it. There is no reconciliation that's going to happen, but there is a reconciliation of the heart and the bitterness goes away. Certain things may dissolve, but if nothing else, you're clean before the Lord and you're clean before man, whether they accept that or not. And so you got to do that. I mean, the prodigal son apologizes to his father. Tells him, I'm, he tells him the whole speech. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. That's right. And, and he's right about that. And the father's grace comes in because, you know, there's more to say. But but he needed to say that. He needed to believe that because it's true. Apologizing to the people in our lives is very, is very, we, if we blow up our life, we probably hurt a lot of people yeah. in that explosion. Yeah. And those people, I know a lot of people that are waiting for an apology of someone that hurt them badly. And most of them don't get it. Yeah. Right, yeah. Um, it's a beautiful gift to give. Oh man, and it feels good to you. I I have you know without you know just telling too many stories here. It's like I, I you know just like you. There was a season in my life as a Christian. I blew my life up in certain ways, and it was my fault. And there's no one to blame. All these things, and uh, you know, ruined my testimony to the lost. Disappointed those who believed in me. Hurt my family. Lots of things. Trouble with the legal system. Whatever. There are people that I specifically had relationship or friendship with in some way that I hurt, you know, used, spoke ill to, hurt, you know, hurt their feelings, misused their trust, all these things that have walked into the rock church 20 years later in my life, 25 years later. And I'll see them in the hallway and there is still, they'll come, maybe they're married to somebody and their spouse, let's go to the rock, you know, and they'll come in and it'll get in, I'll be like, and I'll, t- and I'll, I'll, I have, I honestly don't know how many times it's not like, it's not like 50 times. I either, understand. But it's more than like four or five times. I have gone to people where I'm like, I just, I've caught them in the hallway where I'm like, I need to say sorry for how I treated you a long time ago. I know you moved on. I'm really happy, you know, for your life and everything that's happening, but I, I was wrong and I was a Christian at the time and it, and I'm just sorry. I've asked forgiveness for God, but I've never, I haven't run into you. I have people break into tears. It is, I'm talking, it's 20 years later, more than. People start crying on the spot and praise the Lord, there is a reconciliation in some of those cases. But I feel free of a, of a backpack of bricks on my heart. Like, I, if nothing else, God saw me do this. Because it was on me. And so I, I come to God and I have a long time ago, but now God has put before me my fellow man. And, and I need to do that. And there are people that need to do it. People listening to this right now, stop listening to this. Go fix it. And you may not fix it, but go go do it. Well, we're saying a lot. I know. I think there's one more thing, but I I, I and I'm I don't know how to say this last person I want to say. Some people in the world are. I'm being Latin American. I'm a very emotional person. 
so uh, emotions uh, right. loud I yeah. uh, say these meaningful things you know whatever it's easy for an emotional person to say a lot of stuff okay we can talk yeah I mean you can talk something to death look at, look at this okay, so like you can say I'm sorry you can say all the apologies but listen I think part of apologizing is also changing good like yeah, you know, repenting good. has like there has to be this changing of behavior good man like if you blew up your life and there's true what is it it says that worldly sorrow leads to death but godly sorrow leads, leads to, to repentance, repentance. Yeah. if you truly feel bad for what you've done you got to stop doing it yeah like if you tell your spouse I'm sorry I look at crazy for the internet all the time yeah instead of just wounding them all the time stop doing it <laughs> I'm just saying. He, this guy right here in the prodigal, it says later, he blew his father's and he demanded it early in disrespect, went to a foreign land, went flat nuts. Wasted it's been all of it. He says riotous living, wasted it all, later on to be revealed on harlotry. Like this dude went crazy with all, all his friends leave him. He blows it on prostitutes and debauchery, comes back. He never does that again. He doesn't do it. He, when he comes home, he comes home. Comes to the Lord, comes to his father. He comes, comes home to the as an employee. He's like, I want to That's be an employee right. on the stinking land because at least I'll have a, a, a house and a wage. Like, don't do it. Like, or you're not really changed. You're not really, like, I make mistakes and I, you know, I, I, I need the grace of God every day. I don't get arrested anymore. <laughs> you know, like, what, what do you mean? Like, like I, I I'm sorry, God. I'm sorry to my mom and dad. I'm sorry to the people. Like, I'm sorry to the people I brought with me. And I'm, most of all, the Lord has forgiven and he, and he changes my heart. And I don't get thrown into the back of a police car anymore. You can't, like, I'm a different guy. Doesn't mean you live perfect. And if you do mess up and that happens, God's grace is there. But, like, you're right, though. I'm just yelling about your point. You're right. Like, you can't. Just say it, and you then gotta, he, and, gotta, or be sorry you're caught and fake tears. And I just wish this hadn't happened. And that's not sorry, sorry though. That's not godly sorrow. That's not leads repentance. To repentance, man. It, there is this thing. I I I don't want to hurt you anymore. I don't want to hurt all the people anymore. Yeah, yeah. And listen, change takes might take a long time, but there's yeah. still the, there's the the visible battle taking place. There is the visible struggle, the striving, the growing. Yeah, good. It's not, it might not be overnight. Humility, accountability, righteousness, pursuit of godliness, and letting go of this darkness. Like there, are, Yeah, there are things to do. And then I guess the last thing to say is, you know, you need to be at peace with that and move on. You're not, a, you're not, you're not branded by this. You don't have to wear, there is no such thing now as a scarlet letter, like for whatever the sin may be. You don't have to keep living under this. Like... Oh, I, I'm a terrible person. No, no, no. Stop prostituting the grace of God. Stop assaulting what the cross does for you and what repentance does in fact me. This kid doesn't need to go back and keep saying sorry and grovel at his father's feet and be humiliated by his family because of what he once did. He doesn't have to do that. And you don't either. Don't do that. Don't live under that banner and cloud of a past moment where you needed God's forgiveness and man's too. And say, well, I, don't, I, don't, I deserve, you know, a hard life. And I, it, we don't pay penance. Jesus people, paid it at the cross. believe in it, dude. We don't do that. That's not in the Bible. Have you ever seen the movie The Mission? No. Come on. I don't think so. With De Niro, Jeremy Irons. No. What? No. Listen, like, De Niro was a kid in it. Hmm. It has one of the great all-time scores of any movie by Inidio, Inio Morcon. It's incredible. You only knew that because he was Latin American. He's, he's Italian. You practiced pronouncing that before you got here. Like, watch this. <laughs> There's a scene in the movie. He is uh, De Niro is in a great evil. He's a wicked man, and the priest comes to him and says, "God loves you." He says, "God does not love me. Like you don't need that. God loves hmm. you." He's like, "There is no penance great enough for me." He's like, "Are you willing to try?" And so they climb this mountain. He carries De Niro carries this. Uh, it's like a big rope, and there's all this armor, and he's just carrying up this mountain. And just it's just it, people trying to help him. He won't let him help. He's got he's doing himself. He's trying to like earn. Yeah. Gets to the top of the mountain to these natives he hunted, used to enslave. 
and he's just he's he can't get up this hill. He's climbing, and and one of the natives comes down as a knife, and oh. puts it at his throat, you know, and he's just there like to kill me. And this native man cuts the rope off him, and you know just breaks That's strong. the tears. That's strong. You know, I watch. I I was like, oh, because you can't, but you can be forgiven. You can't earn it. No, but you can be forgiven. And then you need to live forgiven. Beautiful movie, dude. Hmm. That's like the first fifteen minutes. You got it's a movie, dude. Okay. Um. So. Sometimes we blow it, but it's not the end. No. This is what the gospel is. Jonah 3.1, and the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. I need, I've needed that so many times. I've, I go to that passage, and I'll come to tears sometimes. <sighs> All right. If you have a question you want us to tackle, yep. you can email us at encore at rockfenton.com. Two in a row, Two baby. In a row. Two in a row. Um, and we'd love to answer the question you have. Other than that, grace and peace. God bless you, everybody.